Hi again. Here I have a picture of a water molecule, drawn two ways, one showing all of the atoms arranged in a line, the second showing it bent. What's the correct configuration for water? Today's lesson is going to take a look at the shapes of molecules. Many of your texts will refer to what's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And the essence of that theory is that it's the electrons that act as pairs, and these pairs of electrons that are in the valence shell repel each other. Let's take a look at this particular molecule. So the theory would say that around that nitrogen with those pairs of electrons, those four pairs of electrons, they would repel each other. But I want to change that a little bit. Instead of considering these as electron pairs, let's consider what's called domains, or regions where there are electrons. This particular molecule has three regions, and that's more important than the four pairs. So repulsion occurs between what we call these electron domains. Those domains come in a variety of forms. You can have non-bonded pairs, bonded pairs, multiple pairs, single pairs. What determines the initial geometry of my molecule is the number of these regions. In this particular case, there are three electron domains. That means the initial geometry of my molecule is going to begin as what we call a flat triangle or trigonal planar. Had there been four regions, I would begin with a tetrahedral. And had there been two, a line or a linear arrangement. The shape of a molecule is determined by the angles that exist between the atoms. So here I have a picture of a molecule, the purple designating the location of atoms. So my bond angle is between those purple spheres, those, not the electrons. Non-bonded pairs of electrons will tend to have greater repulsion than bonded pairs of electrons. So here you can see in the diagram, the push from the unbonded electrons, those that aren't connected, is going to be slightly greater than that between a bonded pair. Let's apply these principles to several molecules. I'll begin with the simplest one, methane. I always begin with a Lewis dot structure. From that, I can identify the initial geometry. That geometry is dictated by the number of regions of electrons or electron domains around that central atom. In this case, there's four electron domains. That means my electron domain geometry is a tetrahedral. In this particular case, to determine the shape of the molecule, every single one of those domains is bonded to a hydrogen. As a result, the shape of my molecule is also a tetrahedral. In a tetrahedral, my bond angles will be equal at 109 degrees because all of the pairs are bonded and all repel equally. Sometimes you'll see the molecule depicted this way. You might want to use this in your notes versus the ball and stick method that's shown on the left. In this case, the wedges are used to indicate coming out of the page and into the page. Let's take a look at ammonia. Here's the Lewis dot diagram. I identify again there are four domains. That means I'm going to begin with a tetrahedral. However, what's a little bit different in this case is three domains are bonded and one is not. As a result, I end up with this particular shape. You'll notice here the bond angles are slightly different. That's because of the unbonded electrons, the lone pair repelling a little bit more, squeezing those bond angles from 109 down to say 107 or 108 degrees. It's important that you realize the unbonded pairs will distort that angle. By how much, you can usually round that off to about two degrees for every unbonded pair. This shape is called trigonal pyramidal, and it could also be represented this way, where I remove the unbonded pair. And your notes, again, you might want to use this representation. Let's look at, now at the water molecule. Again, Lewis dot diagram, and identify the number of domains. Four domains, so again, I'm beginning with a tetrahedral arrangement. Two are bonded, two are not. That gives me this picture. Again, you'll notice the bond angle has been reduced further. That is because there are two unbonded pairs of electrons squeezing down on that tetrahedral arrangement. This is called a bent, or V-shape. If I remove that unbonded pair, I'll have this. And again, your notes, you may want to show this. Carbon dioxide. There's its Lewis dot diagram. Now, multiple bonds behave as a single region. So in this case, I have two electron domains. 
They will repel each other and form themselves into a line or a linear shape. In this case, both of those are bonded, so as a result, my molecule is also linear. And again, you may want to draw it this way. Ozone. From its Lewis dot diagram, I can identify that there are three regions around that central atom. Three regions means I'm going to begin with a flat triangle, trigonal pyramidal. This would have the regions all 120 degrees from each other. However, I notice in this particular molecule that two domains are bonded and one is not. So that 120 degrees will be distorted somewhat. And here we can see that unbonded pair has distorted the angle down to 118 degrees. This is called a bent or a V-shape. And again, you may want to represent it this way. I'd like you to try one. Why don't you pause the video at this point and see if you can go through the Lewis structure, identifying the electron domain geometry, and finally the molecule shape and the angles. Welcome back. There's the Lewis structure you should have come up with. Three regions, trigonal planar. In this case, every single region is bonded, so I would expect the molecule to also be trigonal planar and the bond angles to be 120 degrees. Thanks for watching, and questions are always welcome.